This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the day to all of you, and it's uh, it's a kind of a, a redo, a revisit. I wanted to touch base because it's so essential to really kiss this topic um, and do updates on it every once in a while. And lo and behold, uh, what came into my radar this past month kind of surprised me. So we're going to be talking about publishing predators, and they come in all kinds of sizes and shapes. They come in um, size in that they could be from a huge company, or they could be a hybrid of some sort. They could be small. They could be, you know, just kind of uh, coming up years and years and years ago. uh, And I'm talking back 40 years ago that I was in the financial services and um, I was doing financial planning before the, the phrase financial planning uh, became the hot new topic. And that it was always important to see what was going on. And I remember that the bills went off when one of my clients who worked for uh, a Slack, which was Stanford Linear Accelerated. Uh, so I was out in the Palo Alto area of Northern California. Um, came in and they were doing all these studies of up and coming and trending career possibilities and financial planning was on it. And he said they were so excited by the stats and the numbers and everything that he was really considering leaving Slack and becoming a financial planner. Now, this is before there were certified financial planners and there were financial advisors out there. But this is a whole new breed that kind of looked at the overall picture. And that time I thought, hmm, oh, oh. Um, and it's, it, it reminded me of a time many, many years ago with when my broker cronies and I were watching the price of coffee go up. Uh, the, it was just, it, you know, the, the, it, by the way, a, a contract of coffee was for 37,500 pounds. That's embedded in my brain. And I can remember when the price was going up, was going through the roof, and I, and all of a sudden, some of my regular clients, I was a stockbroker at the time, and my clients were saying, well, maybe I should buy some coffee, because it kept going up and up and up. And that, and, you know, we were kind of looking at it, and one of my pals really did work almost exclusively in the commodity area. Um, and then I happened to see a little article about um, uh, trees in Brazil getting lots of diseases, and they were coffee trees. So I went in, and I was talking to Jonathan. I said, well, maybe, you know, maybe we all pitch in, and we'll do this together. And you know what? We did. We collectively, each one of us put $1,500 in. We bought a contract of coffee, and each day I'd come in, and I'd put in the symbol for our coffee, which was in March, and it was QCCH, and I'd punch it out, and was like, oh, my God, it was up the limit. And the limit price was it increased another $1,500. I came in every day, and I said, you know what? I can't stand this anymore because it was skyrocketing, truly skyrocketing. And that, and everyone was talking about it. The buzz was was uh, accelerating. Uh, it was getting noisier and noisier. And I said, I think we should sell. So we sold on my birthday. And then my friend said, Well, if you really think that this is going to flip and turn down, I think that we should not just sell it once. We should sell it twice. Uh Uh-oh. So now we are what's called short. And um, and it kept going up and up. And then all of a sudden, bang, the ceiling got hit and it plummeted. And we set a sale of where we were going to sell it. By the time we were done, our little 
$6,000 in, in two months, generated $90,000. Always remember what goes up comes down. It always does. It also does in other fields. And how I'm going to tie this in is I'm hearing more and more buzz about different things. And of course, the big buzz in publishing is self-publishing. Everybody and their uncle is into self-publishing and offering self-publishing services. And that means, especially for you, uh, those of you who are just starting down the publishing path, you are live bait. Boy, are you bait. And you will see a variety of companies, um, well-known companies, companies that are affiliated with well-known companies, but there's a stealth undertow to them, offering workshops and seminars. Some are free, some have a fee, but they're always uh, usually a low price entry fee to participate in some level. So what they've done is they throw out a lure um, and they start getting, you know, kind of, you know, is you reeling it in and they hook you. And then you are hooked. And I'll never forget talking to a guy who called me from, uh, he lived in Alabama. And I finally said to him, why, why did you even get involved with this? And he said, you know, I just wanted them to stop hounding me and calling me multiple times a day. Well, let me make this suggestion to all of you. If anyone is calling you and hounding you, do you, and, and they're using your mobile, do you know that you can very easily just scroll down on the number, just bring it up on your screen, and you can scroll down and block it? And you can do that and start getting rid of it. But I digress. So what you have to do is be really careful of. And at this conference that I was last month, there was a table and of a new company. Now, I had just heard about this new company two days before, and so I started searching it out, and I went through this website, and I looked at it, and the company's name was Author Learning Center. Now, doesn't that sound good? Doesn't Author Learning Center sound like a great name? I mean, who, who wouldn't want authors to learn? I sure want them to learn. And that as I looked it up, I started seeing, wait a minute, This is kind of looking something like something I've seen before. Where have I seen this? Where have I seen this? And I kept probing. Oh, here's the lure. Oh, here's some testimonials from some celebrities. So why why would movie stars be recommending this website? You can't tell me that a movie star is going to Author Learning Center. Wait a second. Something is wrong here. Something's a little fishy going on. And I kept searching and searching. Well, I came, I figured out who it was, but at this conference I showed up a couple of days later, there was the mothership. And the mothership is the granddaddy of publishing predators. The mothership was Author House. Now, Author House is owned by Author Solutions. Um, Penguin actually bought Author Solutions several years ago, and then couldn't get rid of it fast enough because of the stink that was created and the problems and the lawsuits that came along with it. But Author House was there. And Author Learning Center is part of them. They're joined at the hip. So you go in here and, you know, it, it, let me tell you, the website looks good. It looks good. And that there's got some little articles and then it's got a free membership for 30 days. Ah, the lure, here's the hook, the hook, click here and join for free. You don't even know what it costs, but it's free for 30 days. So I'm going to tell, by the way, any of you that subscribe to any app or anything that gives you a free app, whatever that time is, because it may be free in perpetuity or it could have a time limit. So one of the strategies that you want to do that anytime you sign up for something that has a free and if there is a, uh, the clock ticking on it, please go into your calendar, whether it's a paper calendar, whether it's your computer calendar, whether it's a mobile calendar. In fact, you should do it on all of them because if you're like me, sometimes mine don't sync right. 
Or I've had some times where my mobile has decided, you know what, you really don't need this on your calendar. I'm going to erase it. Um, But what I am saying, which is never fun when that happens. But what I'm saying here is that if you have a 30-day free, and let's say today is, uh, oh, I'm going to go in the future. Let's say today is uh, one of the 30-day months. So let's say it's September 1st. And so it's going to be up September 30th. I would suggest you put on your calendar on the 29th or even the 28th that you go in and make that decision. Do you want to continue because they'll automatically start billing you or do you want to exit out and terminate? So uh, I don't know if you've ever been caught by because we're all busy forgetting it, but I would step away. And, And so don't, you know, don't all of a sudden be subscribing to something that you really don't want or not paying attention to or it's irrelevant to you because you just didn't check the box to get you out. So do it a couple of days before your free day period is up and then you can back away from it. All right, next. As I was looking at Author House, who now has a new offspring um, called Author Learning Center, that what you what I looked on it and then I so I said I clicked on it to go see okay so what's on the inside ah it's nine ninety five um, so you can continue or nine ninety nine one of the nine something so you can continue and go in on that and and then as I was there all of a sudden a box popped up a pop up came up saying would you like help with publishing ah okay. Here's the first upsell. This is the first upsell coming in. And this is the way they come around the back door to start picking up and luring you in. So that when that author had said, when I asked, why did you keep doing this? Why? And he said, I just wanted them to stop calling me. This is a different way. This is kind of a stealth way. Sign up for our free then you go on to $9.99, and now online, I can start pushing you instead of having people, although that could be coming, pounding you at odd times to buy, buy, buy. All right, we're talking Publishing Predators. As author, you, your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Browse. We'll be right back. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create develop and publish your book without being good if you already have a book out You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so we're talking publishing predators, and um, and they're out there. They're waiting for you. Uh, if they can find you, they will come after you very, very quickly and do what they can to, to really snar you. Now, last year, I actually I, I wrote several blogs on it, but I also had uh, followed them because some of the, uh, I mean, I had to try to unravel and get a few rescue books away for them. And the, uh, one of the big uh, self-publishing groups called Tate Publishing went belly up. Actually, their doors were closed. After it, would, it put itself out as a Christian publisher, it had many millions of dollars in lawsuits uh, against it, uh, Lightning Source, um, which was Ingram, was owned owned almost two million dollars. Xerox uh, was owed another two million dollars. Uh, a, a big default judgment was laid out on them um, in this uh, late winter of last year, uh, and it, literally the owners didn't even show up in court uh, when Lightning Source sued them. Anyway, they went belly up. They left a lot of authors in the lurch and one author approached me and here's going to be your first tip here approached me because I, I do a once a month pick my brain I do it in my home I lived in Colorado so anyone who lives here and is in the authoring publishing journey is certainly welcome to join us and it uh, and she was saying that she got caught with Tate and they owed, you know, she had put, uh, I think somewhere between two and $3,000. And I asked her how she put those monies down deposit. Well, she paid through PayPal. So tip number one, whenever you're working with someone, um, especially a printing company or any, any, anyone who takes these services pay either using a PayPal or pay using a credit card. Do not do money transfers. Do not send checks. Why? Because if there is any monkey business going on um, and you either, you know, the services are not being rented, uh, crappy quality is, is coming up. Uh, there is non-performance on what they agreed in their contract with you. You have a strong leg to stand on if you paid, you know, paying through PayPal because they have a complaint side to go through um, or your credit card because they'll reverse it. They'll go after it. And I've had to work with clients on both sides when they've gone and needed to go after money. It turned out she had used PayPal. And I said, I want you to go into go right back to the PayPal to tell them you paid this out. Nothing has been formed. They misrepresented, and you need to get this thing nullified and get your money back. And and you know what? In one week, she had her money back. Now, how cool is that? So with that said, as the publishing predator world turns, it is really going on. There are scams, um, and because self-publishing is so huge. And how huge is it? Over half of the books published today, and roughly 3 million, 3 million copies, uh, not copies, titles are published every year. Now, I'm going to say a great majority of them should not be published. They're not edited. They're not professionally produced. You know, you've got the capability of just cramming stuff out there. Not a good idea, uh, in my opinion, but it's out there. And the, the publishing cons know it. So they can lure you in with a variety of areas. So 
that there, there's more books being published. And you have to be remember whenever there's growth, when there's there's high growth going on, this is where this stuff breeds um, and it can come into place. So you want to be careful here and be very tuned in to you could be caught up. So let's talk about some of the red flags that I want you to look out for. And, and, and you know, prevention counts. It, prevention counts. It's like that hate publishing. Guess what? They resurface. They're out again. Lux Creative Concepts and Lux Publishing. They're in business again. But, you know, if people don't do their homework, you're going to get caught. So the first thing that you're going to do when you're uh, considering engaging anybody is that you're going to go to your favorite search engine. The, the Google, as we like to call it in our office, is the biggie. You're going to put the name of the company or the individual you're working with, and then you're going to add, and I would put that in quotes, you know, quote, XYZ books or XYZ press or XYZ publishing, whatever the name of the company is, end quotes, and then add the word scam. And you're going to keep doing that, add the word problem. And then you're going to do another one, add the word complaint. And of course, you're going to do the search after each one. And then you're going to add the word lawsuit. You're going to add the word fraud. You're going to add the word ripoff. And you're going to add the word con. And you're going to read through. Now, you are not going to do what 90% of the population does, which is they only look at the first page of Google. Lovely. You have got to go back multiple pages when you're looking for the problem or the complaint or fraud or ripoff. Also, you could go to ripoff.com and put something in. Now, the, the reason why you have to, to dive down back into um, layered pages is because these individuals who are con artists rec know how to bury stuff. And they could create a boatload of blogs. They could create positive publicity about themselves. And it could rise to the surface, which means ranking on the page. Because remember, on the Google and, and, and Bing and other search engines, it's all about the number of views and hits. So if they are great on creating spiffy titles, it gets people's attention. I mean, really, Author Learning 7, how, how good is that? That's a great title, Author Learning Center. Um, that That's how they pull you in. So if they get clicks on their sites and all that, that gives a higher, you know, it's Google juice. And you go up. Now, you'll notice that I didn't say Better Business Bureau as a resource. And you could certainly put in, you know, the name of the company plus Better Business Bureau. People who get A ratings actually can buy them. Tate Publishing with so many lawsuits against them in the state of Oklahoma, which was their home base. Any bozo from the Better Business Bureau could have easily put the name in in lawsuits. Lawsuits are public records would come up and, and they gave them you know, AA plus rating, really. So I don't, I, I don't use them as a source anymore. So that should be at the top of your to-do list um, as you're going on. So number one is that you're always going to pay with a credit card. Number two, or, or use a PayPal that, that does have a, you know, a, a behind the scenes that they have a, a group within their group that really goes after fraud and the like. All right. And then number two is you're going to spend some time on Google to really go out and figure out or your search engine of choice to make sure that you really probe through um, and you find that. So. The other, other thing is that is that if you um, on your searching, I would recommend that you just go self-published companies. And if they put them, they say they're self-published, I would probably avoid them, period. If you feel at any time you've been duped, misrepresented, scammed, you really want to uh, notify your credit card holder um, that you provided or the person you went through and state so. And then it's really important that you 
um, uh, don't tuck your head in the ostrich. Here's what happens. Most people are so upset that they have been taken to the cleaners. They, I mean, they're really, they're really upset. I get that. I, you know, I've, I've been taken too. We, you know, has there anybody not been taken? So you want to, I shout it out. I tell people, I put names out. Um, in my uh, LinkedIn group, we have over 17,000 members in the Author You LinkedIn group. Someone wrote, uh, uh, just uh, they, they threw out a query. They asked a question. And they said, does anybody know anything about Balboa Press? And then she continued, I mean, it's a Christian publisher. Uh, surely and they must be good, right? And then it was like this vomit stream came out of people who had been taken and duped. Now, Balboa Press um, is under the umbrella of Hay House, you know, spirituality, new age type books and the like. And her thought was, and I've, as, as I've worked with a lot of people who, who uh, went with Balboa Press and later regretted it, is that they thought that it would give them a link to Balboa Press, I mean, to uh, Hay House, that maybe, and of course, Louise Hay is no longer alive, but that the powers to be, um, editors who made decisions, would rope, if they saw how wonderful their book is, would rope them in and yeah. bring them into play. Well, <laughs> it doesn't always work that way, because guess what? Balboa Press is run by the Author Solutions Group. And that the third tip I will give you is that you always want to look at the address that something comes from. Uh, uh, Indi Author House, Author Solutions, Ex Libris, iUniverse, and we're going to name some more after our next break, um, really are based in Indiana. So you have to look. This is the probing. you got to keep diving. And you do it Google you know, where is something located? We'll be right back. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these want to publish like a pro today well then take a look at ingram spark the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source upload edit and manage titles all in one place take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226. 1106 Design. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so we've given you three tips to look at. Always use your credit card or pay through something like PayPal. Make sure you do an online search using words like complaint, con, ripoff, scam, lawsuits, problems, etc., behind um, a company's name. It's always important to do that kind of thing. And that you always want to, you know, avoid, avoid don't bother with the um, Better Business Bureau. It, it doesn't work. Now, what I want you to do is understand, since self-publishes is, is, you know, huge, it is huge. That when someone says, and I and I try to get people who are really fronting the money. Remember the difference between traditional uh, traditional publishing and self publishing. So traditional publishers do front all the money; they do take care of it. Self publishers they front all the money. All right. So if a company says that they're a self publishing company, and you are paying them to publish your book, they are not self publishing. You know, and you are not. You are working with what we call either a packager or a pay to publish. Now, a new a new phrase came up, um, and we've, we've actually done a couple of shows that kissed on this, on hybrid. It means, you know, that, that word just kind of picked up and people really liked it, which was supposed to be between self-publisher and a, a traditional publisher. Now, some hybrids are fairly decent. Um, they pay, they, they pay uh, what they call it a royalty. Of, of say thirty percent, some I've seen some go up to like fifty percent, but they they pay that. Um, some have distribution, and if they tell you if 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 your book is being printed on demand, BOD print on demand, your distribution is just going to be posted, and the and the two major print on demand companies are one Ingram Spark, and two. KDP it used to be called Create Space. It's now it's KDP Press, and so you have that, and they print one book at a time, or if you order ten books, or someone orders seven books. I mean, that's how many they do, and you get a percentage. But you usually supply everything to it. You know whether it's the completed edited book. Hopefully, it's edited. Um, better be. Um, to that that gets uploaded you do the cover now some of them have templates and if, if you're going to go around the DIY uh, place that I, I think Joel Friedlander's templates are probably some of the best to use that really that he's a book designer by trade and really has put things together that are tight and they do well so th then that's you know, that's where that comes in. And I would recommend that if you're going to do it a DIY or and, and load it into uh, uh, 
a template that can have the interior design. Joel's group, and you'll find it at thebookdesigner.com, has a variety of things that you can choose from. And you're talking around 50 bucks, 50 bucks, all right? Now, a lot of people do print on demand, but they actually have a full-blown designer involved in it. From both cover and interior, they do editors. They really want it right, but they, they're not going to be printing an offset print run or 500 books at a crack or 1,000 books at a crack. And that's okay. We all know which way we're going to go in our market, but they want a book that looks good, feels good, um, and reads well. All right, that's the goal there. So understand that you've got the traditional is where you sell it to a, you know, there's five major houses in New York, but certainly there's a lot of other small uh, presses um, that are independent presses that do actually acquire books for not only not big um, advances, could be many, um, but you want to be careful there. Just just figure out what they're really doing. You want to know how much you get paid. And I want to give you uh, a couple of things that you need to make sure you always have in a contract. One is you want to have a reversion of rights clause. You know, and if if there is not in any contract, especially if you go with someone who says they're a self-publishing company, you decide to go down that route. Um, that uh, I, the typical clause I see is that you can terminate your contract within 30 days if it's mutually agreeable. Do not ever, 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 ever sign a contract that has the phrase mutually agreeable. Look at when you want a divorce, there's nothing mutually agreeable usually about it. Um, the second thing is because when, if you're not happy, there's a reason why you're not happy with whoever uh, has your book. Uh, so you you don't Find it with that. You want to make sure that it has a, a, a reversion of rights. That and of course, once the books um, go uh, used to be in the old days with a traditional publisher went out of print. I mean, it kind of had its run, and there wasn't really much interest in it. That they would revert the rights back to you as the author, and you could do whatever you want. Okay, now because of print on demand, they don't have to do that. That they can keep your book in perpetuity, uh, one book at a time. So you want to put in the clause that you have the right to revert your rights or to terminate the contract if, say, uh, 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 at, at least 300, if, if no more than three or less than 300 copies of your book have sold in print in a year, you have the right to fully terminate the contract, which means also that you get your e-rights back. And audio rights, so you can take control of that. So understand, those are a couple more tips that you want to make sure and understand. All right, so the next tip is, and here's a huge lesson, is you don't want to rush to publish. It's, it's very important, the RTP syndrome. Don't rush to publish. you got to do your homework. So are you going to go the traditional path? Are you going to go the self-published path? Which means that self-published means you take it all on. Now, next tip. If you do that, even if you're going to do print on demand, I want you to create your own publishing company. It's not If, you're, if your name is um, Jim Johnson, it's not going to be Jim Johnson Books or Johnson Press or Johnson Publish. Get a name that's different from your name, or if you have a you work in a, in a company in a corporate, get it different from that. Um, so it looks like a publishing company. For example, my press is Mile High Press. I live in Denver, Colorado. I created it back in 2000, actually, so 17, 18 years ago. I created that, and all my books are published under that. And I've also published a few other people, but they're published under the imprint. It's called an imprint of Mile High Press, and I bought 100 ISBNs to cover all of that. So that's your lesson, uh, and do it so you make sure it looks like, as a self-publisher, that if you go with a hybrid or someone who is a packager and claims to be a self-publisher, and as I've told you in our last segment, they really are not a self-publishing company. They're a packager or a pay-to-publish operation. Yes, they could bring in editors, and you may pay for that, or you pay an upfront. Maybe you have to pay, um, well, it's going to range from 
Um, you know, it could be four ninety seven, five ninety seven. It could be five thousand dollars that you have to pay, and you have to guarantee you buy so many books. And I, I know a company that which I would absolutely stay away from called Morgan James, which is they charge like five thousand um, dollars. They may say they claim they pay advances. It could be a hundred dollars, and you have to sign a contract saying you'll never tell. You know, you, you don't tell people what you. Um, get in advance, or it could be a little bit more, but it's tokenism. It's tokenism. And you have to buy uh, X amount of copies of books, and those books are usually sold because they're usually purchased print on demand, um, and they're usually purchased, uh, they add a couple of dollars more on top of the book of what the cost is. Um, I will tell you my experience with companies like Morgan James is that their account- the accountability and the accounting is not transparent, and it's tough to get information out of it. All right, so do your homework. Have a paper trail. Understand exactly what you're getting to. And going back to just before the break, if a company promised you distribution, you can yawn. If you're on Amazon, 70% of all books are bought on Amazon. You've got distribution. If you go, I, and what I would recommend is you post and load your book into IngramSpark.com. That opens you up, and mark the box I want to be in the Ingram catalog. That opens you up to Ingram, where you have a gazillion titles, and also almost all bookstores can buy through Ingram. So if someone goes into a bookstore and says, you know, they're looking for your title, they can find it and they can order it. Make sure that your book is returnable. It has to be returnable. Otherwise, bookstores are not going to open it, uh, order it. So Ingram could be with a combination of having your book up on Amazon and available through Ingram, you have your distribution. Now, if your goal is to be selling it in a bookstore, you better be committed to you better be committed to hustling and driving people to buy that book. If you are not committed and hustling, then you, uh, you're you in trouble here. And your books, the lifetime of your book ain't going to work. It's going to be returned very quickly. They want people who are committed. So with that said, we're going to go into you know different options here, what guarantees are, and minimal books. We'll be right back. This is Judith Bryles, your book shepherd, and it's all for you, your guide to publishing. Is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these the book shepherding concept is simple the publishing world is changing and so must you You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. One of the most- 
most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking publishing predators. They are all over the place. And I've actually gave you a new name, Author Learning Center, which is really tied in with Author House. Um, And they are the granddaddy. More people have been lured in uh, by going with them. And one of the things that we have traditionally seen here is that um, they quality is questionable. Quality is uh, uh, really the manufacturing, plus really their editing services. I had one person that came to me after she had done all of it that that signed up for the publicity because we know she was bing, bing, bing to do it. Um, And it was mediocre, mediocre from press releases to everything else. So I, I just you have to be careful. That's all I can tell you. So when it's free. When it's cheap, if it sounds too good to be true, mm-mm, you're not going there. Just don't go there. If they give you guarantees of success, let me tell you, there, there is no guarantees here. Um, I've always said that if an author is going to be successful, if it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to you on this. Um, if they tell you you have to order a minimum number of books, you have there's a red alert there. If they say that you can't, you know, you can't publish it anywhere else and they're going to be using their own ISBNs, which is why I want you to get your own. Next tip, you go to myidentifiers.com, myidentifiers.com, and you go in. The minimum you're going to order is 10. One will cost, oh, like 125 bucks or sometimes you'll see special deals on it. 10 will cost 295 and sometimes we have codes and discounts. Um, that you can try on that. And 100 will cost like 495. Now, if you have a book and uh, you need to have an ISBN number and, and the ISBN is like your book social security number. That's why it's important. So if you buy a bank of them, whether it's 10, 100, that you've got a range, you'll see them, there is a logical order. There's gonna be, they all start with 978 and the next set, next set of numbers will identify your publishing company, your name. So create one, but and by the way, when you do that, go into Google, again, a search, and see if there's anything else that has the same thing. If it says Johnson's book, and there's a billion Johnson books, you're not going to do that. 
you find one that's unique. I've had clients if you pick out a favorite city on uh, in another state that they always loved. And, and you know, on a, and I had one had a little small coastal city. He just loved it. That's his publishing company. All right. And then I would register it with your state. And, and, and again, it's very important for you to, to determine, you know, is there a predator in the mist? Is, is there com- complaints? Are there problems? Is there anything going on? That's what you're after. You want to check that all out. So uh, you, you bring it into play. So is it, you want to go to, you know, myidentifiers.com. So you pick that up and you have your own ISBNs. You check out, you create your own press, and then you start going forward. And you, I want you to think that whatever you do in publishing, this is a business. This is a business. It takes work. So think about how much time, how much energy, and how much money will you commit to your book? If you're going to tell me you don't have a lot of time, and I don't want to commit more than $500, you know, you're probably in trouble. You're, you're not, you're not going to get a heck of a lot for that. So um, you'll get almost nothing, in fact. So you've got to figure out what you're going to do to get behind it um, in, the, in this area. And then, and then you've got to figure out um, how much uh, is, is having any type of control important to you? Is it important uh, to you to know where your books are sold or where they're offered? Is it important for you to receive monies for book sales that come in fairly promptly? Uh, Traditional publishing, you're waiting at least six months. You only get paid twice a year and there's always holdbacks and they pay you. They have a June, December cutoff and they don't pay till March and September. And depending upon what's going on in the industry, they may have holdbacks or what we call returns, all right? Is it important for you to be able to track an ebook? Yes, it is. Are you, are you someone who wants to be involved in the process? Or are you someone who just wants someone to take it over? And you always, what's your vision? Now, I mentioned why you're going to have multiple ISBNs. First of all, on your copyright page, you're going to put, you know, your ISBN numbers. So if you do a hardback, that's an ISBN. If you do a paperback, that's an ISBN. If you do an ebook, Although, <clears throat> excuse me, Amazon doesn't require it. Barnes & Noble does. Kobo does. Other platforms will. And usually you want to be open to other platforms. Um, if you're going to do an audiobook, which I would absolutely encourage you to do an audiobook, that is where the growth is now. It's in the audio land. Now, it's still, you know, a minor player in overall book sales. Uh, uh, print is still the granddaddy of book sales. Uh, where they're going at least 60%. Ebooks are around 21%. Um, we're talking overall book sales. And audiobooks are growing at around 30% a year, and they're very getting very close to hitting double digits. So you really want to think about being there um, in that. For example, if you're hearing this uh, for the first time, I just completed the audiobook for my brand new book, um, How to Create a Million Dollar Speech. That's what authors, you know, that's the number one way I'm going to tell you. That's my experience. I've done it. I've lived it. I've enjoyed it. That's how I sold a million copies of my books with what I call the the uh, uh, the uh, cash cow two step my mouth and my words. And I know you can do this, too, but it takes time, commitment, energy, all those things to make that happen. So you want to really think about. This You want to keep away from people who offer something that sounds so good, it can't be true. Because guess what? It's not true. And you just have to be so careful in this. You have to be so careful with who's out there, who's trying to uh, attract you, who's trying to pull you in. Because there's, there's a variety of things that are are, 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 are going to be after you. And there, there are red flags. And if for people, you know, and as I said, just to recap, if they promise you um, national distribution, it's a yawn. You will get that with Amazon. If you get up with, if you post your book with Ingram Spark, by God, you're going to have the ability for uh, bookstores 
to find you and to discover. You can go to a Barnes and Noble who is a very stickler on this, saying you have to have a distributor. You just say Ingram is my distributor, and they can oh look you up. Oh my gosh, yes, we can order your book this way. You can do a book signing this way. Think about that. So you want to make sure if they if they say that we'll bring you distribution, it's a yawn. It doesn't mean anything. If they tell you they guarantee you're going to be a bestseller, <laughs> boy, that's a red flag. You've got to be careful of that. If they say we can guarantee you, we will we, get you national publicity. No one can guarantee that. No one can guarantee that. That some people have a good track record of doing that. And I know I've been fortunate having a lot of, of national publicity for my books. But I can also tell you that it's it, it doesn't always work that way. You want to make sure that whenever you're looking at to, to notice any other red flags, that there are sites like Writer Beware that you can take advantage of and, and look at and, 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 and do a following in that area that will really could save you um, a lot of anxiety and problems there. Um, so you want to... Uh, uh, be really careful in that area. Then you also want to really, really look at this whole whole arena that um, if, as I said, if it's, it sounds too good to be true, stay away from it. But the red flags are there. They can't guarantee anything. The only thing they can guarantee, they should be guaranteeing is, is we will create a quality book, one that you will have no regrets of, one that you don't have to apologize for, one that you can be proud of. That's the guarantee I want. Now, what you have to do is create the content that goes within it. And that you have to also have on it that uh, you have to have full approval from cover, what the cover looks like, the input that goes on the cover. Remember, the back cover has got to have marketing copy. Absolutely. And if someone will not let you participate that and sign off and improve it, Huge red flags, stay away from them because this is where book sales happen. Remember, your cover is worth five or three, three, maximum seven seconds. All it is is pick me up, look at me, turn me over. The back cover ranges from 20 to 30 seconds. This is where your sales wow. copy is. This is where you have the benefits. This is where a nonfiction author is telling them, this is the pain I relieve on it. Most predators would never let you touch any of this. And I'm telling you, it's essential that you have your fingers on it. You know who your market is. You write to it, you go to it, and you market to it. That's how you become a successful author, not letting these author people in your midst. With that, I'm Judith Bryles. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. We'll see you next week. Keep on writing. Keep on publishing. <laughs> a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each week a variety